Hey guys, I'm back. So, I'm sure since you're watching this, you guys have all heard about particle accelerators, right? Like the Large Hadron Collider, or maybe a better focused pen. Maybe, okay, that's better. Anyway, um, so you're probably wondering, how would they accelerate a proton, right, which has a positive charge? So we'll just say proton is going to equal little plus, or electrons, a minus, right? That is an equal sign. Anyway, so you're wondering if how they do it. So it's, it's rather simple. If you were to take a proton here, right, and just have it sitting there, forget this, this is completely separate. If you were just to have a proton just sitting there, the way, how do you attract a proton? Well, opposites attract, right? So you surround it by a chamber of negatives, right? Not electrons, necessarily, but they could be magnets. So you can think of positives like norths and negatives like souths. Focus. <coughs> oh, <excuse me. coughs> anyway, so like the north is attracted to all the souths, and since it's even between them, it gets accelerated on through. Now, the way particle accelerators work is you could just have a really long chamber of these things, and as it gained more energy, it, was, it would be continuously accelerated through. But you're saying if, the, if you have one here, wouldn't it be pulled back as well as forward? Well, yes, so in particle accelerators, the way they do it is they have like a ring, right? Here, you have a ring. And then you have another ring here. And what they do is when the proton is coming in, they have it be negative. And when a proton is going out, they have it be positive to push it away, right? Because opposites repel. Right? So, I mean, that's the way the particle accelerators work. You can try it with a magnet. You get a magnet and another magnet. This is as much like the pushing away part. And if you were to flip it so that this was a north, this was south, this is like the attracting part. So, you know, magnet railguns and stuff, similar technology. They're just like linear accelerators. Linux. So, I mean, that's the way it would work. So in case you're wondering what they do is for Linux 2, CERN's linear accelerator, they feed in what's called a sine wave. Now, a sine wave looks like just a regular wave, the same kind you're used to. I don't think I have a really good drawing anywhere around here, but something like this. Like all curvy, like, you know, that's not perfect. And they feed that into some, you know, rings that are surrounding a vacuum pipe where the protons go. And they've timed it so that when the proton is here, it's at, um, it's at the bottom, right? And when the proton is here, it's at the top and then when it gets here this one would be at the bottom as to co come in like propel the next one and then this one would be at the bottom also to come in this one so the way it would work is you would end up if you had a proton here with a ring here and a ring here this one would end up being positive and this one at negative to push away and pull forward and they do that by feeding a carefully controlled sine wave in so I mean that's really it you really don't need much to build a particle accelerator. If you want, you can have a big negative plate. If you want to accelerate electrons and a positive tube, and you will get your electron beam out this way. Yeah, because that's your little electron there. If you want to accelerate protons, just do that. So, I mean, obviously it's a bit more complicated than this. This whole thing needs to be vacuumed out in a pipe you could have like a little foil window there or something if you wanted to shoot the particles into air. But I mean that's it. But if you want to accelerate streams of particles, the best way to do it is to feed in a sine wave so that when something is here it's being pushed from the back and pulled from the front and when the next thing comes it happens over and over again. Now because if something's in the middle it's either going to get pushed back or pulled forward it makes little bunches of particles like this. Right? Because if something is right here, it's going to be either pulled back to this one or pushed up in front to this one. So it forms little bunches like that. So, 
um, you're going to get like a bunching effect, but you know, that's obviously useful for a lot of particle accelerators. So that's how they work, is that just opposites repel, and opposites attract, sorry, and the same things repel. So you can you can do this with electronics. That's the way old TVs work. Old TVs work is that they have a um, a uh, source. They have a little coil thing that's emanating you know stuff all over the place. They have a little tube. Since it's accelerating electrons, they have a negative. So the electrons are here. They don't really want to be here. They wanna they want to go this way or that way. They want to get out of this negative. But since right here they have a positive, they're saying well going this way would be nice, it would get us away from the negative, but going this way, we're also attracted this way. So all the electrons are going to start to go this way. And then they have some focusing coils around here just to keep the beam focused, and then it shoots out and a little magnet, say, if you, you know, um, you know, if you put a negative here, it, the beam will curve this way, and if that's a positive, the beam will curve this way to bend towards the positive. So that's how they do the old TVs. So, thanks for watching. That's how particle accelerators work. Bye.